Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor, and I'm glad to have you. Today's topic of conversation is going to be about the pressure in a boiler system. We're talking specifically hot water boiler systems here, not steam. That's a totally separate topic. But today we're going to be talking about how to adjust the pressure in your hot water boiler system. And honestly, how to change the pressure is the most simple part of the whole equation. How to decide what to set the pressure for is a little more complicated and a little more involved. So we're going to cover both of those things here in just a second. Stick with me. Here it comes. Okay, so hot water boiler systems are pressurized. They're known as closed loop systems. And in order for them to function, they need to be full of water from the bottom of the piping system to the top of the piping system. And it is the water pressure that is responsible for filling the entire boiler system from the boiler itself down in the basement through all of the network of piping and radiators, radiation, all the way up to the top of the system. So what the pressure is going to be in your system can vary depending on how tall your system is and how your system is configured. Now, when you first arrive on a job site, one of the things that you need to concern yourself is, is what is the pressure in my boiler system? And let's take a look here at some very typical ways in which you would know that. All hydronics heating systems are going to have a pressure and temperature gauge located somewhere near the hottest part of the boiler. Now, you want to use some caution when you're reading these gauges because they can often get stuck or park themselves in a constant spot on the dial and they'll just stick there regardless of what the actual pressure or actual temperature is. So once you've determined that you can in fact rely upon what your pressure gauge and temperature gauge is telling you, this is where you will find that information. It's always a great idea to go ahead and have your own pressure gauge that you can screw onto a boiler drain to check the pressure independently for yourself. On both of these pressure gauges, the pressure is indicated in two different ways. The gauge on the left, the pressure is located on the blue scale on the bottom, and it is found in PSI, or pounds per square inch, and feet of water, which might be a little confusing. On the one on the right, the pressure is located on the top, and it's, located, it's identified in pounds per square inch on the outside dial, and altitude on the red inside dial. Now that is a clue. So get your handy dandy notebook out and write that down. We're going to talk more about that later. That is a big clue. Now every hot water heating system is going to have some way of getting water into the system. Back in the olden, olden, olden days, this was literally a hand valve, a gate valve or a glove valve that a person would turn and adjust. And the idea was that you had to know how tall the system was and you would allow the system to fill until you reach the correct height, which is why pressure gauges list altitude or feet of water. Well, today we don't always have um, pressure. Um, Today, we don't always have hand valves that will open and close. Instead, we're going to have some kind of an automatic fill valve, which is typically going to take the form of a pressure reducing valve like this one. Typically, the household pressure in the pipes or in the commercial building you're working in is going to be somewhere in the 50 to 60 pounds per square inch neighborhood. Well, the pressure in your boiler system is going to be quite a bit less than that. So there needs to be some way to reduce the pressure from the normal domestic water pressure down to the boiler water pressure. And the pressure reducing valve has that job. It has that responsibility. The valve is set to maintain a constant pressure on its outlet side right over here. If any water is removed from the system, the system pressure, of course, is going to fall. And the valve is going to be respond by opening a little bit to fill more water and restore that pressure. And when the pressure is back to the standard set point, it will stop filling. Inside of this housing is a spring mechanism that is pushing down on a valve to push the valve open. 
Meanwhile, system pressure is pushing back on the underside of the spring, trying to push the valve closed. When those two pressures are in equilibrium, the valve will remain at the constant pressure. Now there are all kinds of different pressure reducing valves out there, and it is kind of beyond the scope of this little video to try to describe how to adjust all of them. But I will describe how to adjust this one because this is probably the most common type or style of pressure reducing valve that you'll find in the field. This pressure reducing valve is equipped with what is called a fast fill feature. That is this little lever assembly right here. When this lever is moved to the upright position, a little cam lock in here pushes down on a stem, which forces the valve to be open all the time. And this is called a fast fill bypass. So if you need to put a lot of water into the system, such as on an initial fill, and you need to do it quickly, pushing this up will bypass the pressure reducing feature and allow straight pressure to come through. If you do that, you do have to pay attention to your pressure so that you don't exceed the maximum allowable pressure in the boiler. For most cast iron and copper fin tube boilers, this is about 30 PSI. Some boilers have higher pressure readings, but 30 PSI is a pretty common uh, set point for a lot of boilers. So to adjust this particular pressure reducing valve, the first thing that you will do is unscrew this little top that has the fast fill handle. And as soon as you take that off, there's going to be a little metal uh, rod sticking up out of there. You'll just pick that up. Don't lose it. You're going to need it. <laughs> Next, this uh, a nut here is just a lock nut to stop the um, adjustment from changing. Simply loosen that lock nut up, and now the threaded collar that that lock nut is on is your pressure adjustment. There's going to be a little screwdriver slot in the top of it, and as you screw it in, you will increase the pressure as you screw it out you'll decrease the pressure. Once you're finished, tighten the lock nut back down, put the little metal rod back in, and tighten the top back on. And you're done. Not too tough. That's the easy part. The more difficult part comes into, how do I decide where to set the pressure reducing valve? Let's get into it now. So on all of our hot water boiler systems, System fill pressure is determined by the height of the system. How tall is it? How high up in the way air does that water go? Let's assume that on the rest of these, until we get a little further on, let's assume that our boiler is going to be the lowest point of the system. The boiler is on the ground level or in the basement, and all of the system piping goes up from there. We're going to need enough pressure to fill the system to the top plus an extra two to five PSI to ensure good flow through the highest emitter. Emitter being the radiator or the baseboard fin tube or the uh, fan coil or, or whatever might be the highest point of the system. We still need to have a little bit of pressure above zero up there, but it doesn't have to be a whole heck of a lot. So here's where a little bit of math comes in handy. One pound per square inch of water pressure will push a column of water up 28 inches in height. Another way to say that is a column of water that is 28 inches tall will exert a pressure of one PSI at the bottom. The higher the column of water is, the more the pressure is at the bottom. And this is due to the weight of the water pushing down. The taller it is, the more weight there is pushing down, therefore the higher the pressure. I like to think of divers. I used to watch Jacques Cousteau uh, when I was a kid, and he'd be diving down. They talk about the pressure as it increases as you get further down because there's all of this water above you pushing down on the bodies of the divers. Well, the same thing is true in our hydronic system. The taller that pipe of water is, the more pressure is being pushed down because of the weight of that water from above. So, as I was saying, we need to have enough water pressure to fill our system all the way to the very top of the highest emitter, plus a little bit of extra to make sure that this pressure up here never goes below zero. So I've got this imaginary system here. Let's imagine that it's about 40 feet tall, uh, four stories plus a basement, and that's where the boiler is. So if we measure this out and convert 40 in, uh, feet into inches, simple math makes that 480 inches tall. If I divide 480 
by 28, because there's 28 inches in one PSI, that tells me that the minimum fill pressure is 17 pounds. 17 PSI will get us from the bottom of the boiler, fill up to here with a zero PSI at the very, very top. Now I wanna add at least two pounds per square inch to make sure that this pressure is not zero. So add two pounds to 17 and that's 19 pounds. And let's round it off to 20. There we go. A simple fill height of about, or a fill pressure of about 20 PSI is gonna be perfect for this kind of a system. What I like to do is I like to make the math easy. Well, it's real simple if we just take our system height, 40 feet and divide it by two. Because hey, one PSI is 28 inches, right? Well, 28 inches is really close to 24 inches, which is two feet. It's a lot easier to do the math that way. 40 feet tall, divide it by two feet. That's 20 pounds per square inch pressure, cold fill pressure. That's going to be enough to fill me to the top, plus the extra that I need to make sure that I'm still pressurized in my very highest emitter. Now, funny thing about this is if you buy a pressure reducing valve out of the box, back in the old days, they used to come set right at 12 PSI. Why? Well, a standard two-story home with a basement uh, is going to have an average kind of maximum height of about 24 feet. 24 divided by 2, 12 PSI. Nowadays, I've noticed in the past few years, pressure reducing valves have started to increase up to about 15 PSI out of the box. And I think this is due to the fact that it's the style today to build taller houses, to build higher ceilings in homes. And that's reflected by the standard pressure reducing valve set point. So that is the rough idea. Just take your system height total, divide it by two, and that is a pretty darn good cold fill pressure. Now, when I say cold fill pressure, I mean, when you're filling a boiler for the first time and everything's cold, that's what the pressure should be. It needs to be enough to fill it all the way to the top, plus a little bit extra to make sure that the upper uh, regions don't go to zero. Now, let's put another little spin on this. Let's make it a little bit more advanced. What if the boiler is at the top of the system? A lot of commercial buildings get above 40 feet. They get a little taller than that. What if they're six stories tall? If it's six stories tall and you have an average of 10 foot per story and uh, 60 divided by two is 30 PSI. Well, hey, didn't I just say that the maximum allowable water pressure in a boiler is 30 PSI? That's right. That's also going to be the pressure relief valve blow-off point. Well, it's not a good idea to set your relief uh, to set your system pressure at your relief valve blow-off point. So, not only do we need enough pressure to fill the system and keep the topmost portion of the system under a slight positive pressure, that pressure has to be less than our relief valve blow-off point. In the case where you're going to have a system that is taller than the relief valve set point on the boiler, that boiler can't exist at the bottom anymore. Or the boiler is going to have to have a higher maximum allowable pressure rating. A lot of commercial boilers that are designed to be at the bottom of a system that's a little taller are going to have pressure relief valve settings of 50 PSI or 75 PSI or even as high as 125 PSI. Or they're going to use a low pressure boiler, a 30 pound boiler, and they're going to put it at the top of the system. I know of one place in particular, which is a very nice high end condominium complex where it is six stories tall and the boiler is at the top. It's a 30 PSI cast iron boiler. that's at the top of the system. So if your boiler is the highest point in the system and you're measuring your water pressure at the boiler, the water pressure only needs to be a couple two to five PSI because obviously it's going to be filled all the way to the bottom. You need to fill it all the way to the top where the boiler is. Let's look at another scenario. Imagine you have a slab on grade system, one story, no basement. The boiler is essentially now the highest part in the system, but the radiators are only like four feet lower than that, running along the surface of the floor. The system, the pressure in that system only needs to be a couple PSI. Five PSI would be fine. Hey, can it be 12 or 15? Sure, no problem there. The key is that your, 
there's enough pressure in the system that nothing goes to zero and it's less than whatever the blow off part, uh, whatever the, the key is that there's enough pressure in the system so that nothing ever falls to zero or below and the amount of pressure is less than the pressure relief valve set point. Anywhere in between those two is perfectly fine. As your building starts to get taller, you will find that your window of available allowable pressures gets smaller and smaller. For example, in this system here, 40 feet tall, 20 pounds is going to be our minimum cold fill pressure. On the other hand, um, 25 pounds would be fine, but now 25 pounds is getting pretty close to that 30 PSI relief valve set point. I would will caution you against anything closer than five PSI to the relief valve set point, because even though our pressure is supposed to stay the same throughout the running cycle, it doesn't always, <laughs> depending on the way the system is pipe designed and pumped. Speaking of pumps, the last thing I want to mention is the inlet of the pump can never fall below zero. In commercial applications, you may have a pump that has a pretty strong delta P or pressure difference across it. So when that pump turns on, the inlet of the pump drops by sometimes 10 or 20 PSI, depending on how the system is designed. In a case like that, you have to make sure that your cold system fill pressure is greater than what the inlet of the suction of the pump is going to be when that pump is running. So once you have decided on what your cold fill pressure is and you've filled it to that point and you've turned the system on, it's a really smart idea to measure the inlet of your uh, pump to make sure that it hasn't fallen too far. A lot of pumps uh, in the commercial applications will have a specification called net positive suction head, also known as NPSH, which basically means this is the lowest possible pressure that you should operate the inlet of this pump at. As long as your pressure doesn't fall below that, you are good to go. Okay, folks, so that's the long and the short of it. You need to have enough pressure in your system to fill it all the way to the top, plus a little bit extra. Enough pressure to make sure that your uh, pump inlet never goes too low, and not too much pressure to avoid pumping into that relief valve set point. Hey, this is Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification button. We do videos like this all the time. And if you think something like this is helpful, we don't want you to miss a single one of them. Before you leave, tell me what you think. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below, especially if you have ideas about videos that you would like to see. Do you have any burning questions that you would love to know the answer to, or maybe we're too afraid to ask? Don't be scared. I'll be happy to consider any and all topics to build videos upon. Don't forget to go to www.hvacservicementor. We've got a bunch of really cool training programs there. And while you're there, think about looking at the Boiler Bootcamp. It is an excellent program to help forest air technicians get up to speed on everything they need to know to start being successful servicing hot water boiler systems. While you're there, sign up on our email list. Every new sign up gets access to a free full length training course. Hey, I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC Service Mentor. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.